Hey everyone, I'm Rabia Williams. And I'm Bob German. And we are Microsoft 365 Cloud Advocates. And today we're going to show you how to build a Microsoft Teams application that will help your team have better meetings. Let's get on to it. So this was our last <laughs> team meeting. All right, let's do status updates. Who wants to go first? Oh, wow, the silence. <laughs> Anyone? Wait, I could wait. go. Uh, oh. Oh. Yeah. So I, I'm I working could... on the. Wait. Well, Bob, wait a minute. Uh, just... Stuck in over each other. Um, no, no, no. Go. We go uh, alphabetical. Um, maybe from the right or left of everyone. I don't so, know. Wait. Are you on the left? So on my Cause... upper left. Yeah. Well, they can on my. <laughs> yeah, Bob's this on my is terrible. <laughs> so we knew we had to do something about this. And all of a sudden, it was time for FHL. What does that stand for again, Rabia? Well, it's fixing, hacking, and learning for a week in yeah. Microsoft. Well, that's perfect, because I know a couple of things I wanted to learn were Teams Toolkit and the Fluid Framework. And we get to use both of them in this application. All right, so let's get on to it and fix our problem. And bring it right into the meeting so everybody can figure out who's talking. So everybody open up the Who's Next app. It should be at the top of your screen. Yep. And then just go ahead and add yourself in. Did I go, did I get first? So I automatically go first? Is that how yeah, it you works? Yeah, you do. Yes. You do. I unless, need to be slower next time. <laughs> unless we push the, if you don't want to be first, then somebody can just push the shuffle button. And it's Robbie oh, and I. Oh, yeah, sure. I can shuffle perfect. again because I'm feeling shy now. It's Gary. Very formal there. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> and then the surname in. <laughs> and then when we're ready for the next speaker, we just click the button and it goes to the next. Nice. So. Awesome. Nice. <laughs> so that went pretty well. What do you think? Yeah, I think that was pretty amazing. I'm I'm really glad everyone joined the call and was patient enough to have it tested. But I think they loved it. I hope so. I mean, because we worked hard, right? I mean, uh, you started the app. You created the beginning app. How did you uh, How did you do that? Yes. So, Bob, as you know, we had one week to um, create an application in Teams. We had to get the UI working. We had to get mm -hmm. the Fluid Framework working, which is something we hadn't tried before. Um, so with that limited amount of time, we used the VS Code extension to create Teams app, the Teams toolkit for um, and what Teams Toolkit does is actually get people up to speed with creating app, making it ready, you know, set up, configuration, everything is easy so the developer can just focus on creating apps, so which, which is exactly what we wanted. Um, so we had this base sample app in Teams Toolkit, which is mm -hmm. a meeting app. So I went ahead and created the base application from that. Well, it was great because by the time you handed it over to me, um, it, everything was working and I was able to put it in a... Uh in a meeting. I mean, we didn't have the the whole UI yet, but initially, but yeah. you know, you, it was at you could add it to the meeting and you basically had the framework all all there. That's right. And I know that I worked on the UI aspect of this React app, but you worked on the uh, fluid framework, uh, Bob. So can you take us through that as well? Yeah, I, I think the fluid framework is so cool. I mean, so basically, the idea is that it makes it really easy to create distributed data structures in JavaScript in your browser. We used a shared map and a shared map is just a bunch of key value pairs. And so all we wanted to do was store that list of names. And it seemed simplest mm -hmm. to just store the entire list and as a JSON structure. And so it made it really easy to do that using just one key in a shared map. Uh, but there's other cool data structures that I'd love to try later, like sequences, which know how to handle things being added and removed and keeping everything in sequence, which is kind of a different problem, right? Like um, our app is rewriting the whole data structure every time. And so maybe yes. you would lose something if two people hit the button at the same instant and it was very unlucky. So um, with, with a sequence, <laughs> with a se well, well, you know, it's, we're relying on the user to, to hit the button again, if they have to, yeah. but with a sequence, Fair. maybe, maybe it's a sequence of runners um, finishing a race, right? You would not want to lose one, right? So the yeah. sequence is designed for multiple people to add and remove items at the same time. 
Um, there's also a shared string, which at first I thought is what I was going to use, but it turns out that a shared string is uh, for editing. So it has all the data formatting and everything. It kind of gives you this little oh. mini uh, word processor. And nice. um, and then there's a shared counter, which um, just you know allows you to count things again with the inputs coming from multiple uh, browser sessions at the same time. And of course, you wouldn't want to lose one. So you wow. kind of have to, and there's there's more too, but it the, those are the main data structures. And so I just kind of went back to computer science, happy land, like <laughs> reading up on those and, and thinking about how hard that used to be to figure out how to do one of those and have it be reliable. Yes, I, I remember that time when you were just learning about Fluid and you would just put messages after message. Oh my God, this is so cool. And I was like, yeah, I'm actually missing out now. <laughs> but I'm glad we have it all working now. So Rabia, why don't you walk us through the UI in a little more detail? Okay, so what you're looking at is two tabs. I've logged in as two different people. They're two different profiles. I just want to see you, the whole synchronization. This is the uh, meeting um, tab. So I've added the app. And as you can see here, we've got one section where you can go ahead and add names uh, of people who want to speak. So this is where you would go ahead and add your name in if you're in a meeting and want, wishes to speak. Um, you can add yourself or you can add someone else's name as well. And let me just show you, you can also just select this button. Um, so it will add the current uh, username. So you don't even have to type your name in if you're just selecting this. Um, let me just manually add a few folks in here. Okay, so I've added a few uh, people. They're all waiting to speak. You can see that and you can go ahead and remove folks if you want to. Uh, let's go ahead and remove someone. Um, this feature is there in case someone doesn't want to speak anymore. I've left the meeting or things like that. You can go ahead and remove that person. So next speaker button and the shuffle button would select a speaker for you. Currently I'm speaking and if I want to shuffle this list, not go as per the order, then I can go ahead and um, select shuffle or I could just pick uh, the next speaker. For example, I'm speaking now. I could go ahead and choose a deal by selecting the next speaker or I could shuffle between all these folks in here and for that I would uh, click on shuffle. So let's try next speaker. Cool. So that now I've done speaking, I've selected a deal. So this is how it works. So do you want to see the code? Yes, absolutely. Let's go. Okay, so here is the Who's Next project. I'll start by just showing some things that I had to do special to make the Fluid Framework work inside of a Teams meeting. And so uh, this started, as Robbie has said, with a Teams meeting app uh, sample from the Teams toolkit. And then what I had to do was I had to add something. So here, tabs is where the client side code gets built. And I had to go in and add a couple of packages here. The first one is the Microsoft Live Share package, which is what's going to give me access to the Fluid Framework from a Microsoft Teams meeting application. And then there's the Fluid Framework itself, which is the part that's going to synchronize my JavaScript data structures between the different uh, clients that are running my app. Another thing I had to do was I had to pop down to uh, th this is the manifest template inside of the app package. And I had to add um, to that, so you'll see all the normal stuff here, my configurable tabs uh, and all of that. But I had to add some special authorization. These are called resource-specific consents. And it's basically just saying that the owner of the meeting is authorized to provide these consents to LiveShare uh, and the meeting app so that it can use the live share objects. So you can just kind of copy this and I'll put a link in the comments where to the documentation where you can get a copy of this, but it, it's the same for every app. Uh, you don't need to do anything special, but you do need to include it in your manifest. Okay, so let's go back to the code. And what I wanna show now is sort of, well, there's some components here and you'll see who's next.jsx is the actual React component that implements the tab. And then there's who's next config uh, .jsx is going to implement the React component for my configuration page, which, as you'll see in a minute, doesn't really do anything. 
but you have to have one in order to place the tab in the meeting. Then um, what's more interesting probably is to show you how the fluid part works. So I created this little fluid live share service and you can see that it's going to bring in the live share client from the live share package, the live share host from the Teams JavaScript SDK, and the shared map data structure from the Fluid framework. And then it's just a class. And um, you'll see that down at the bottom, I'm going to export a single instance of that class. So it's a singleton object. So if several components want to use Fluid, they're all going to use the same instance. So inside the service, I have, first of all, a constant, which is uh, I'm using a single key value pair inside of a shared map. And that's going to contain a JSON structure with the array of person names. And the reason for choosing that is so that things like shuffle could work easily. Um, the sequence data structure might have been more appropriate, except for uh, there's, there was no easy way to sort of shuffle it or change the sequence. It's really, really, really good at keeping things in order. Then there's the service state. So we've got a fluid container. That is the concept of uh, sort of a container that's going to have our shared data in it. We also have a local array with the person names. Uh, that's pound people. We also have a local array of registered event handlers. So each UI component that uses this little service can register an event handler that's going to get called if the underlying data should change. And so we store those in that array. And then uh, there's this connect promise. And you'll see the public version of the connect function is going to just always return that same promise. But it's only going to actually connect the first time. That way we're ensured there's only going to be one connection, regardless of how many components try to connect. So let's look at the actual connect code. First, we're going to get a live share host from the Teams SDK. Then, and let me, let me close this so that you can see it better. Then we're going to get a live share client from, the, from that host. And then uh, we're going to create a container uh, which is going to have our shared map inside of it. And you can see the initial uh, objects in the container schema here are going to tell um, the system exactly that we're going to have a person map, which is a shared map. Okay, and then we'll save that away inside of our service state. Then we're going to go ahead and read in the people who are already in the map, right? We may not be the first people in the meeting. There might already be some people on the list. So we'll go ahead and retrieve that. And if, you know what, if it's empty, then we'll just assume it's empty, right? And then we'll uh, parse the JSON and populate our local version of the array. Finally, we're going to handle the case that the data has changed, either because this user made some change uh, to the, at the UI or some other users did. If the value changes on line 53, we're going to call this inner function, which is going to get the new uh, version of the person map and populate that uh, array again, and then call all the registered event handlers. So call, let every component locally know that there's new list of people to be displayed. So that's the connection process. And then um, we have this internal function, internal to the class called update fluid. And all this does is uh, basically all of the main functions pretty much, they do something to the local array, like add person, Right, is just gonna it's gonna do a little bit of checking and then it's gonna push a new name onto the array and then it's going to call update fluid. And so update fluid is going to just stringify that JSON, stick it into the shared map, and that will update this client and all the other clients. It's kind of an important concept. We don't want to update our user interface locally until the shared data structure has been updated. So when somebody adds the person, we don't actually update the UI um, at that point. What we do is we update Fluid, and then we rely on this little inner function to call the event handlers and update the UI when we see those changes come back from the Fluid framework. And then all the other functions here are just really simple, like they're just manipulating the array and then calling update fluid. And so you can kind of see what they all do.
and get the person list just returns the the array which is uh, a private member and then registered event handlers are managed here and and that's it right really pretty simple so let me go ahead and run this and I'm going to speed it up a little bit so now Teams Toolkit has created the manifest, it's compiled the code, it's running the code, and it's giving me the ability to sideload um, in my app into an actual meeting. So all I have to do is click this, find a meeting that I want to add to, and I can go ahead and set up the tab. And then what will happen is it will bring me into that meeting in chat mode and allow me to configure the tab. Now there's nothing to configure, and now Here's my tab, and guess what? It only works inside the meeting. So in order to make it work, I have to join the meeting. Um, I don't have to really have another camera and everything. I'm, I'm actually using it to record this video, so um, you know it's not available, but that works fine uh, without it. And now I can come in here and open up my app, and you'll see that it's gonna connect to the Fluid service, and then here's our user interface. And as I noted before, even when we're local, um, we're going through the fluid service so I can see at this point that everything is working. So that's the app. That's who's next. And we built it using Teams Toolkit. Um, we created it. We hosted it. We tested it. Everything using the Teams Toolkit. So do check out. Um, you can find them in Marketplace. You can also find them in VS Code directly in the extension. You can search up Teams Toolkit and it will pop up. Um, so any last words, Bob? Well, yeah, the source code is also available. And so you just have to go to aka.ms slash who is next because they wouldn't let us put an apostrophe in the link. <laughs> so you have to spell out who is next. And um, you, you'll come here and you know what? If you like the video, please make sure that you click that like button so that um, so everybody knows that they should watch this video. And also it would be great if you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you'll get notified of more Microsoft 365 developer videos. So thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone.